Hi everyone, Michael Puglis again coming to you with Caitlin Macy. We are going to be doing a 12.5% salicylic peel on our model today. Uh, this is an ethanol based peel. It's one of our more aggressive peels or really the intro to the more aggressive categories of peels that we have available. Uh, a client can typically expect anywhere from about three to eight days of peeling depending on the integrity of their skin, the level of peeling that they've had before. Certainly not a one size fits all topic here. Um, those that have uh, the necessity for this level of peeling, a more hyperkeratinized skin, uh, kind of a grade one acne, nothing too uh, inflamed, this is going to be their more appropriate. Salicylic is one of those ingredients that's used widely for claim on acne, everything from a leave-on product to a wash. However, it can be a little bit more broader for an application. It can be used for treating anti-aging, but it's also good for treating a client that has a non-inflammatory type of acne. Um, when we talk about our uh, peels as far as activity, this is an ethanol-based peel. Ethanol is a natural delipidizer. It has a tendency to seek out the sebaceous follicle and will penetrate a little bit quicker, a little bit deeper into the skin and break down multiple layers of stratum corneum. So within a couple of days, the client can expect some moderate uh, peeling to uh, severe peeling depending on the concentration of the acids and the number of layers that we've applied. It's the other benefit to ethanol is that multiple layers can often be applied. Uh, for today's model, we're going to be using our 12.5% salicylic again, so it is the most conservative method. So she can probably expect about five days of peeling. We're going to be sending her home also with our Circadia Post Peel Kit. It includes our Post Peel Balm, our Vitamin C Reversal Serum, our Vitamin Veil Cleanser, and also the SPF. The real purpose here is to make sure that we're protecting and maintaining the integrity of the skin and protecting it from ultraviolet exposure and other environmental stressors as well. The post peel is an occlusive material that helps to maintain that transepidermal water loss, the moisture content, so that when she does start to peel, it comes off in nice even sheets and doesn't actually create little cracks and fissures and tears into the skin. We don't use a petrol atom base here. Uh, many clients don't like that. We do have a consistency of that petrol atom base. Again, we're using a blend of uh, squalling butter, meadow foam butter, uh, royal jelly to maintain that consistency, but these ingredients have a little bit more anti-inflammatory properties, so it gives for a little bit more of an overall recovery type of treatments. Now, when it comes to the application, we're simply going to be applying a single layer to the surface of the skin. You want to make sure that you're not doing too much overlapping with each application, um, but we're also going to be using a brush here that's a more refined uh, acrylic type of brush that allows us to really see where we're applying the individual acids rather than um, overlapping the product uh, multiple times. Now we'll be starting with our lipid replacing cleansing gel as our initial cleanser. This again is our foaming surfactant cleanser. It's going to help to remove some of that surface oil and debris from the upper layers of the skin. Also works as a great delipidizer without being overly stripping and it's going to help with the penetration of the acids that we're working with here. Now our model's not wearing a lot of makeup, however if she were we would be probably starting with a pre-cleanse using the Vitamin Veil Cleanser. Uh, but it's not necessary for today. Now again, we're ensuring that the client's skin is going to be dry before applying the acids. The reason being, of course, is that we don't want to mix the acid and the water together. That can generate some undue and unnecessary heat and also some additional discomfort for the client. Um, so we don't want to add anything more than is necessary. Now, of course, the client's going to experience, uh, because it is a more ethanol-based peel, a little bit heavier of a sensation of discomfort than is normal. Once we get the acid onto the surface of the skin, we can do a little bit of fanning, which is going to help to alleviate some of that discomfort. You must be cautious, however, because if we apply the acid and then fan the skin too quickly, 
it can actually create some of that evaporation and it can take away from some of the efficacy of the peel. So you want to make sure you've got good even coverage, make sure it's on the skin before we go forward with any kind of fanning. And again, with this particular base, the ethanol, we want to make sure we're getting one good even layer. Multiple layers and overlapping is something we want to do our best to avoid versus the gel bases that we've already taken a look at. We don't really have to be as concerned with. So one even application here is really the focus of this treatment. Now with ethanol, Again, a little bit more experience with the client's skin and as you as an esthetician are working with the client's skin a little bit more and seeing how they're responding, you can go a little bit more and do multiple layers. But of course, the more layers that you're applying, the more client's skin is going to have a tendency to peel. So it's going to extend that peeling from anywhere from three to five days, maybe upwards of five, eight, ten, up into two weeks. Now once we've got the layer on, we'll get a little bit more of a close-up and we'll be able to see there's two different types of frosting that we're going to be able to uh, take a look at here. Frosting that we typically look at at the skin, which is considered to be a little bit more of a blanching effect, which is a breakdown of the protein of the surface of the skin. It's actually referred to as coagulation. And then we'll also be able to see kind of a recrystallizing of the salicylic acid on the surface of the skin. Salicylic is considered to be much of a more of a larger molecule. Uh, it's a beta hydroxy acid, so it's much bigger than uh, the standard glycolic, lactic, even the mandelic acids that we use in the industry. So you can actually see a little bit more recrystallizing on the surface of the skin. Yeah. Now you want to make sure that you're uh, recommending to the client that she's staying out of the sun out of direct exposure for as long as she's peeling, ensuring that she's using the vitamin C, the post peel, and of course the SPF as that skin begins to peel. It's baby skin that's underneath there, so you wanna make sure that the SPF is completely covering any of the areas that have freshly been peeled and freshly been exposed because they're a little bit more susceptible to that ultraviolet damage. Now at this time, the client's all finished. We're done relatively short application protocols. The real bulk of the responsibility of making sure that the peel turns out the way it's supposed to relies on the client and the compliance of the client in using the post care products. So you wanna make sure that you're continuously checking in with the clients over the course of those days while she's expected, he or she is expected to peel and ensure that they are using those post care products. Again, if they're abandoning the use of the products, there's potential of creating a little bit of fissures, a little bit of tears in the skin, but as long as it's protected, it's gonna peel in nice even layers and the skin underneath is gonna look refreshed and beautiful. So this is gonna be your post peel home care kit. You're going to be using this for about the next five days or so or as long as the skin continues to peel. You've got in here your cleanser, your SPF, your vitamin C, and your post peel. So tonight, about six hours from now, you can start with your initial cleanse. You're going to use the vitamin veil cleanser. Then you're going to apply the vitamin C reversal serum and the post peel balm. Okay, and you're going to use that before you go to sleep tonight. Tomorrow morning, you follow the exact same procedure, but then you're going to also apply the SPF right over top of the post peel. Okay. So you're going to use this again for the next five days. You should have enough product to last you at least five, probably up until the next eight or so. Um, and if you have any questions at all, you can contact us. And this belongs to you. All right. Thank you so much for being a wonderful model. I appreciate it. Thank you.